Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God for my Open Door family, my Facebook friends. We're here on today. Amen. Thank God on the 4th of August here at 999 Green Avenue off of Dr. J.B. Burnsway. I am the senior pastor, Pastor Bernard Taylor, and we invite all of you to come in. Tell a friend, tell a neighbor. Amen. Thank God that pastoral teaching is going on here at the door. And we're teaching, amen, today on the subject matter of sin. We just got finished dealing with man, his creation, and the fall of man. Is that right? And so we're going to deal in this lesson, we're going to deal with sin, S-I-N. Is that right? And so we certainly thank God for each and every one of you. We want you to like, we want you to share, and we want you to comment. Is that right? And we thank you in advance for your support. We thank you for your encouragement. And we also thank you for considering taking time out of your schedule, carving that time out to hear from the Lord what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Let us go to the throne of God in prayer. Our Father and our God, we give thanks and praise unto your holy and righteous name. Bless you now, and we shall be blessed. Strengthen us, keep us all day to day. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. We're running a few minutes behind on today. Amen. Got caught up taking care of some other matters, but we're here. Is that right? We're here for you. And I thank God you being here for me. Is that right? And we in this together. Together we stand, yes, and divided we fall. We, we're better together. We got to do things in a collaborative way. Uh, these are the days that we're living in. These are challenging times. These are unprecedented times. These are times where people are going through so much. Is that right? And you have a lot of negative energy in the atmosphere. And so we got the shift. Somebody said shift. It's time to move out, amen, thank God, from negative thinking people, amen, surrounding yourself with negative influence. Is that right? Uh, you don't need that kind of energy to energize you. Is that right? Somebody said, I need a boost. I got my booster shot, but I need a boost. I ain't got nobody. And the Holy Ghost want to give you a boost. Is that right? But you have to get rid of the S-I-N. There's nothing wrong with the S, and there's nothing wrong with the N, but the problem is with the I. Is that right? And so when you got S-I-N, in that's sin is that right but you got to take the eye out is that right l-i-e lie take the eye out is that right ain't got nobody here today and you got to replace the s-i-n with the s-o-n amen and then you have the son is that right he that have the son have life and amen thank god he that have not the son doesn't have life is that right but when you have the son you got life and you got it not only have it, but you got it more abundantly. Is that right? And the Lord want to give us that abundant life by accepting him, by repenting, acknowledging that first of all, we have a problem. And the problem is the sin problem. Is that right? But if you want to uh, keep your head buried in the sand and you want to make believe that you don't have a problem and everybody else got one, but you don't. Is that right? And so that is the first mistake. And so you have to get rid of that weight of that train of thinking, and you have to bring in the wondering mind. How do you do that? By allowing yourself to align up with the word and the will and the way of God. The word, the will, and the way of God. Because there is a way, and it is, that seem or seemeth right unto man. But the end thereof is death. So the Lord wants us to come out from among them and to separate ourselves. Sometimes you get caught up, amen, with buddy salvation. You get caught up with that's my boo, that's my crew. You get caught up with that's my Bessie. You get caught up with, you know, um, if they'll go, I'll go. If they don't go, I ain't going. If they come and I'm coming with them. Is that right? But you have to understand the Bible wants you to work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling so you can have positive influence or negative influence. So who influenced you to do or not to do? So some people, they want to encourage you to do, but they'll discourage you from doing. Is that right? Because of where they are in their thinking. But my brothers and sisters, you have to get it for yourself. Is that right? You have to get it for yourself. And salvation is free. And so it's available. 
And so we have to get it for ourselves. Is that right? So we're going to deal with today in this lesson, and we're going to deal with sin. Sin, first of all, my brother and my sister, will keep you. Somebody says sin will keep you longer than you want to stay, and it will. Uh-huh. Have you ever been involved in a sinful act or a sinful behavior, got sinful traits, got sinful uh, attitude, got, got sinful way of thinking? Is that right? Sin, help me say sin, will keep you longer than you want to stay. And then it'll cost you, there's a price, there's a penalty. It'll cost you more than you're willing to pay. You, want, you don't want to pay for your sins, is that right? But there are what we call consequences to sin. Yes, God forgive you, and he does. And there is forgiveness, and it is. But there are still consequences for sinning. Is that right? The Bible said, the soul, S-O-U-L, that sinneth shall, notice the verb, surely die. Huh? Spiritually and naturally. Is that right? So when Adam, the first man, when he sinned, uh-huh, uh, 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 eating of the forbidden fruit, he and his wife, they was driven out of the garden, out of the presence of God. Sin drives you huh, out of the presence of God. That's when David fell to his flesh. When David messed up, David said, Lord, whatever you do, he knew how precious uh -huh, the spirit of God was and is to his life. He said, God, whatever you do, please, Lord, do not take your spirit away from me. Huh? But, but I want you to do something, amen, for me because I know I can't make it without you. Is that right? I need for you to do something for me. I know that I messed up. I know that I failed. I know that I disappointed you. I know that I brought shame to the kingdom. I know I brought shame to the people, amen, as the leader. But God, I need you to help me. Uh huh. I am the leader, but I need you to create in me a clean heart, oh God. Uh-huh. Amen. Thank God. So we go to Psalms 51. Uh huh. Now, uh, the chief musician, a psalm of David, when Nathan, the prophet, came unto him after he had gone in to Bathsheba, when he had slept with Bathsheba, another man's wife. Is that right? And David said, have mercy upon me. Uh, he have no long dissertation of prayer. Uh, anything on father of Abraham, Isaac, he said, Lord, have mercy on me. That's a real prayer. Coming from the heart, I'm a broken place. Is that right? He knew he messed up, and he was in a broken place. Uh-huh. He said, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression. I want you to blot it out, God. Uh, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. I, I need to be thoroughly washed from this and cleanse me from my sin. I want to be not only washed, but cleanse me, God. Get it all out. Is that right? For I acknowledge my transgression, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. David acknowledged his wrongdoing and acknowledged who he did the wrong unto. And also, David sought for forgiveness. He sought for help. So when you got a problem, you look for the solution. When you're in trouble, is that right? You look for a way out because you already know what you're in. Uh -huh. And so when you're in trouble, you look for the opposite. Is that right? Oh, man, what can free me? What can release me? What can take me out of captivity? What can take me out of my bonds? I, 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 I'm in, in my entanglement. I'm in trouble because of the decision that I made. I'm in trouble because of the choice that I chose. The Bible gives us, as free more agents, the right to choose. And so we do have a right to choose. What is your choice? What have your choice been? All throughout your life, you made some good choices and Perhaps you made some bad choices. You made some good decisions and perhaps some bad decisions. But at the end of the day, you have to live with the decision that you made. You have to live with the choice that you chose. We all do. Is that right? And so we have to own up. Somebody said, take ownership of the mess that you made. I got to take ownership of the mess that I made. Is that right? Because at the end of the day, I want to make sure, I want to be sure that I get wrong right, crooked straight. 
I want to make sure that my problem don't remain a problem because I got the solution for the problem. And so I got to make sure that I embrace the solution and not keep wrapping my arms and, and huggling and snuggling with the problem. Going to bed with it, waking up with it, walking with it, talking with it. Uh, is that right? I ain't got nobody here today. So you have to release yourself, amen, from being depressed, from, from wallowing in what happened. What happened in the past is in the past. What's happening now in your present. God said I'll be a present help in a time of trouble. Sin brought trouble to my life. Sin brought trouble, amen, uh, to my ministry. Sin brought trouble in my home. Sin brought trouble in the workplace. Brought trouble in the community, the neighborhood. It brought trouble in the business. Wherever it brought trouble at. But trouble don't last always. There's an antidote to the trouble. Huh? Oh, my God, my God. Woo! Uh, so David goes on to say in verse 5, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desire truth in the inward part, yes, Lord, and in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. The sin was so deep in David that his bones felt like they was broken. My God, that's how hurt he was because he knew that he had failed God. He knew that he had really messed up. He knew how awful it was. I ain't got nobody here today. But because of the love that he had for the word, because of the love that he had for the God that he served, because of the love that he had for what God, amen, has been to him in his life. That he asked God to wash him, to cleanse him, to purge him, to make him over again. My God, my God. So brothers and sisters, the origin of sin was covered in lesson 14. Now today we study, we learn that sin originated in the heart and in the mind of an angel. And that angel name at that time was Lucifer. Lucifer's name got changed to the devil after he got tossed out, kicked out, thrown out. Is that right? Of heaven. Uh-huh. So sin originated in the heart and mind of an angel. Lucifer. God had blessed him to be a beautiful angel. Had music built up in him. Is that right? He had, he had instruments, horns, and organ. He had horns and uh, just built in him. Is that right? My God, my God. Son of the morning. But the sin was pride. The sin of Lucifer was pride. Four letters. P-R-I-D-E. Five letters. P-R-I-D-E. Five letters. Uh-huh. Pride. Had him become lifted. Wanted to elevate himself above the throne of God. Want to make himself equal to God. You're not God. I'm not God. Why try to go there? Don't go there. Somebody say, don't do it. Don't let people soup you up. But don't soup yourself up. Is that right? We can do nothing apart from God. Our gifts and calling, uh, I ain't got nobody, comes without repentance. I ain't got nobody here today. Somebody can be gifted. They can be talented. Is that right? And still have the devil in them. Huh? You have to make sure that you're right with God. Righteousness, the Bible teaches us, exalts a nation of people. Uh, but sin, S-I-N, that three-letter word, is a ruination. Sin, cancel contract. Sin debilitates. Huh? Righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. Sin will pull you down. Sin will destroy you. It will knowledge. It will wipe you out. All the good that you've done, all the good that you're doing, if you make a mistake, if you fail, people will forget about all the good that you've done, all the good that you're doing, and they know you're doing good. They know you did good, but they are only focused on what you did wrong. That's people for you. But thank God that God is not like man. Man will keep things over your head for life. But God is not that way. 
So thank God that he's a forgiving God. He's a loving God. He's a merciful God. He's a caring God. Daughter, I see your tears. Man, I see you just shaking your head. They said, man, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. Somebody said, come. Somebody said, it's time to come out. Pull yourself up by your bootstrap. Dust yourself off. And say, Lord, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my mother, not my father, not my sister, nor my brother, but it's me, oh God. I'm standing in the need of prayer. Prayer works. Prayer changes things. Huh? If it don't change the situation, it'll change you. I made up in my mind. Have you? For God I live, and for God I die. I'll let nothing separate me, come between me and my God from the love of God. Lord, I love you. I love you with the love of, I love you with the love of the Lord. I love you because you first loved me. You taught me how to love. You taught me the power of love. The Bible said through love, through love, help me say love, love. Through love and kindness have I drawn thee now. God wants us to love, is that right? Uh-huh. Don't, don't love the sin, but I ain't got nobody here today. You hate the sin, but you love the sinner. Is that right? Because the soul that sinners shall surely die. The Bible said, come out from among them, separate yourself. Touch not the unclean thing, and then I'll receive you, yes, he will, unto myself. What, what was wrong, you got it right. What was crooked, you made straight. Huh? You was down, but God picked you up. You was lost, but now you found. And David said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He brought me out of what? Darkness, yes he did, into his marvelous light. I owe him a praise. I owe him the honor. I owe him the glory. Huh? The Bible said, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Somebody clap your hand and give God praise. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory. Lord, you're worthy of all the praises. I'm not worthy of your love. I'm not worthy of your compassion. I'm not worthy of your mercy. I'm not worthy of your grace. My God. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Huh? And so Satan, the sin originated Lucifer in the heart of the mind of an angel, Lucifer. There was pride, a desire to be above God. Sin brought God's judgment. The judgment came because of sin. Thou hast sinned, therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. Look and listen to God. I will destroy thee, O covering cherub. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 16. And read what it says, and it reads on this wise. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Was tossed out. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Oh, oh, cute thing. Oh, gorgeous. Ain't got nobody. That's a diamond. Woo. Oh, yeah. I'm a 10. Huh? Your beauty. Some people get caught up in their beauty. My God. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Don't think that you are more than what you are because you look good. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. <laughs> look at God talking to Lucifer. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings and that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuary, verse 18. By, make note of these scriptures. By the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic, therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee. And I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. Verse 19, all they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shall thou be any more. My God, my God. What a penalty. What a price you have to pay because of sin. 
As I forestated, as I forementioned, sin will keep you longer than you want to stay. And it will cost you more than you're willing to pay. My God. The account of Lucifer and his fall is given in Ezekiel, make note of the 28th chapter, verses 15 and 17. Thou was perfect. Now, the above scripture, the surrounding scripture, now let's keep it in its proper context. Is that right? So we got to keep it in its proper context. Is that right? So the above scripture is going to give you some evidence, internal evidence. Is that right? I ain't got nobody here today. Now, this is internal, internal evidence. Is that right? The account of Lucifer and his fall is given. Is that right? Now, got to give an account. The fall of Lucifer. Let's go to above scripture. Verse 15. Thou was perfect in thy ways. From the day that thou was created. You didn't make yourself. Huh? God created you. And God said in the word, thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou created, was created. Till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. And thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. And I will destroy thee, annihilate thee. O covering cherub. From the midst of the stones of fire. Jesus declared, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. You'll find that in Luke 10, 18. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. There was no sin before Lucifer. Let me say that again. There was what? No sin before Lucifer. There was no sin before Lucifer. He became the devil. Didn't I tell you before mentioning it? He what? He was Lucifer, but he became the devil, Satan, Slewfoot. Huh? This great deceiver used the form of a serpent to tempt the first human beings on the earth. Now, this great deceiver, he became the devil, the serpent, Slewfoot. And he became the great deceiver. He's deceptive. So he deceived the woman, Eve. Use the form of us in the form of a serpent to tempt the first human beings on the earth. Sin entered the human race through deception. How did sin enter the human race? How did sin enter through deception? He's a deceiver. He want to deceive you to think that God got it all wrong and he got it all right. So he paint a pretty picture to make it make you think. That God don't really care about you. God don't really love you. God's not really offering you everything. He's just giving you a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But what I have to offer you is everything. The devil is a liar. He deceived the whole human race. There is a need to understand, my brothers and sisters, of the mind of God in reference to sin. Understand the mind of God in the reference of sin. This can only be found in the word of God. We brothers and sisters live in a permissive society. Did you hear what I said? We live in a permissive society. It is no longer popular to use the word sin. People don't want to use the word sin. So they dance around it. No, be specific. Keep it 100. Keep it real. Sin is sin. Call it what it is. Or he fell. Or they use the word uh, indiscretion, huh? a mistake, a failure. Yeah, you can use all those words. Is that right? To try to dilute my, the, the impact that that three-letter word makes and made is sin. Huh? Use the word sin, lost, eternally doomed, depraved, because their terms are too strong for good people. Uh, in the church, the Bible class, the private study of God's word, we can never change the terminology of God to fit the so-called moral standards of society. Our standards are different than the moral standards that society live by. So you can't live by the standards of the world. The world standards is not equal to God's standard. God's word is inherent, inerrant. In other words, there's no error in God's word, but there's error in the words that man put in there. Is that right? The Bible said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall stand forever. It's going to last forever. God's word is forever. 
It's perpetual. Uh, it's lasting. I ain't got nobody here today. But the devil is a deceiver. Therefore, is there for a reason. This will not be a popular study, but a needed one. People like popular study. Is that right? They always want to talk about, you know, uh, Daniel in the lion's den, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, Paul and Silas uh, bound in jail. Huh? Oh, yeah. But they don't want to talk about, amen, thank God, when a person truly falls and fell God. Is that right? So there are many uh, 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 evidences, internal evidences in the word of God when men fail. Is that right? And there's also evidence where men had power to overcome because they resisted temptation. They resisted the pull. Of, is that the force of sin? Like Joseph did. Joseph had the opportunity, as did David, as did Samson. But out of the three, only one passed the test. Out of the, okay, you got Samson, let's put another four. You got Samson, huh? You got David, huh, right? Yeah, those two right there, they fell. Then you, then you also have Joseph. Joseph had the same opportunity as Samson and David to fall, to sin. But he passed the test. He didn't succumb to his flesh. He didn't give in to temptation. And so there are two illustrations. There are two examples. Contrast and comparison. Compare the one to the other. One did and one didn't. Two, did, two didn't and one did. Uh, so you got Samson, he fell to Delilah. You got David, he fell to Bathsheba. Huh? And then you got what? Joshua, when Potiphar's wife came on to him, and she had on that sweet-smelling fragrance, and she was just adorned like the sun kissed her body, and she was just looking magnificent, and she was all well put together, had herself refreshed, trying to entice Joseph. But Joseph had a cause. I ain't got nobody here today. And he refused to go in unto her and commit an act of adultery. So he resisted the temptation that came. And he passed the test. So my brothers and my sisters, you can pass the test. He, he held on to his anointing. He ran to save himself. And she tore his garment. He ran to, my God, my God, you, you know, he was just right there. He could, couldn't take it. He said, man, I got to get out of the presence of this before I fall. And he was second in charge. He was second in command during this time. He respected his leader, and he respected his leader's wife. And so he refused to come down. He refused to sin. He refused to come in. Because she was trying to entice him. She was trying, amen, to, to flatter him. She was trying to seduce him. She was very seductive. And because he wasn't prayed up, David. Because he wasn't fasted up, Samson. He got caught up and entrapped. And it cost them both. But on the other side, on the other hand, Joseph, he withstood the temptation, the seductive behavior. And he passed the test. Sin. Sin is powerful. My God, my God. Uh, brothers and sisters, I said, therefore, this will not be a popular study, but it's a needed one in the day and time in which we live. Because people, they think they can do what they want to do, when they want to do it, who they want to do it with, where they want to do it, while they're doing it. Is that right? You may have many reasons, but your reasoning doesn't make what you do right. You have many reasons to do wrong, 
They may be valid reasons to you, good reasons to you, but it's still wrong. Wrong is still wrong, even though you've got reasons for it. It doesn't make a difference by doing right versus doing wrong. You got a choice. You can do what's right in spite of the reason that give you opportunity to do what's wrong. I ain't got nobody here today. And so you have to make sure you control your temple. The Bible said the body is the temple. Is that right? Amen. So when two people join together in holy matrimony, is that right? And then you, you, leave, you leave your parents, you leave your mom and your dad, and you cleave to your husband. And then the two become one. So you're no longer one, but you're no longer two, but you become one. Is that right? And so the woman don't have power over her body, neither does the man. Is that right? So God put that together for procreation. Is that right? He put that together for the woman and the man that is legally married. Is that right? Amen. For one another. Is that right? And the woman is not to deny her husband unless for that time, is that right, of her administration. I ain't got nobody here today. Is that right? Uh, you came, oh, I got a headache. Oh, I'm not feeling well. Or you just doing it to use it. Huh? Is that right? Uh, just to be in control. E everything is on your terms. You, you, everything got to be your way. Or, 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 that's wrong. And, and it's sinful. And it's not godly. But you have some that do that. And it brings problems in your relationship that otherwise wouldn't be there. And so now... There's the reason, but even though there's a reason, even though uh, the person is not doing what they're supposed to do according to the scripture, but they want to do what they want to do according to their flesh, then it causes problems in the, in the marriage, in the relationship, and it leads to things that otherwise it wouldn't lead to. But it happens. Is it right? No. Is it wrong? Yes. Yes. So that's why you got to pray, you got to fast, and you got to watch. And you have to ask God, Lord, you see and you know. Is that right? Amen. My God, my God. God, God want us, God want us to be faithful. Is that right? God, God, God don't want us not to be faithful. Is that right? Amen. God, God want us to be faithful. And we can't do what we want to do and expect it to be right in the, in, in the eyes of God. Is that right? God, 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 God wants us to be faithful. Is that right? Huh? Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time. Matthew 5, 27. Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her have committed adultery with her already in his heart. If thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members, look at this illustration, should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Is that right? Amen. Let's read on. Verse 31. It hath been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, save it for the cause of fornication, cause her to commit adultery, and whosoever shall marry her, that is divorce committed adultery. Again, ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shall perform unto the Lord thine oath. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is of God's throne. I had to read it all, couldn't stop there, my God. Nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Is that right? Amen. So God want us, amen, to lessen the friction, lessen the tension, lessen the problems that occur in relationships of marriage. Is that right? By aligning ourselves up with the word of God. What does the word of God say? So if you don't want to be with a person, why be with them? Is that right? Amen. So you don't have to be where you don't want to be. So why be with a person you don't want to be with them and be miserable? What, what, what is that? That's no life. 
Who want to live that way? Nobody should be forced to live beneath the way God has planned for them to live. Is that right? Amen. So when you was free and single and you was out there or what have you, you was able to date him and her and that kind of thing was no commitment there or what have you. But even if you uh, went into one another, a man went into the woman and you wasn't married, that's fornication. And when you're married, it's adultery. Is that right? And so at the end of the day, you know, we have to decide what do we want. Do we want to be single? Do we want to be married? I ain't got nobody. And if we're single, can we live a single life and become chaste? Is that right? Uh, is that right? Uh, and, and, and just like Paul said, everybody can't become a eunuch. I ain't got nobody here today. Is that right? Amen. Some people need to have a wife. Some people need to have a husband. And some people can do without it. So you have to know, can you do without a husband? Can you do without a wife? If not, and then in order to make things the way God, amen, want it to be as believers to align ourselves with the word of God, is that right? We have to do according to the scripture, not according to our flesh. The flesh is a mess. Temptation is strong and it comes all the time. But the Bible says, submit yourself therefore unto God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he'll draw nigh to thee. And so you can't do it unless you apply, make the word of God applicable to your life. So you got to know where to find the scripture at. So you go to John, and the fourth chapter of John, to deal with the temptation, and how to handle the temptation. Is that right? My God, my God. And so we have to be careful how we handle ourselves. Is that right? Somebody said, be careful how you handle yourself. You, you can't allow your flesh to handle you, but you got to handle it. Somebody said, you can't allow your flesh to handle you, but you got to handle it. And so a lot of times people are overcome because they succumb. Because the devil know where you're weak at. The devil know where you're most vulnerable at. And everybody have a weakness. What is your weakness? What is your vulnerability? So the devil know what you were saved out of, what you were saved from. And so that's the very thing he's going to present to you. And so that's why you have to do what the Bible say do. These kinds only come out by prayer and fasting. So if you don't have a prayer life, you're not fasting, you're not watching, you're forsaking of assembling yourself in the household affair, then you succumb yourself to all these things that will cause you to have your mind drift, have your mind, amen, start to wonder, have your mind all over the place instead of where it should be at. Is that right? My God, my God. The nucleus of this truth. Most of, most, if not all, people recognize the conflict between conscience and conduct. The difference between conscience and conduct. Man has a natural tendency to go astray, to think and act in a debasing way. There is the endless struggle, brothers and sisters, to do good, but evil is always present to distort, to lead astray. Is that right? Evil is always present. Is that right? Amen. Let's get scripture. Let's go to Romans. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let's go to Romans chapter 7. I believe it's in Romans uh, chapter 7. Struggling with sin. Struggling with sin. Some people still struggle with sin. We was born in sin, according to the Bible, and shaped in iniquity because of the first man, Adam. So that's why Jesus came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Because, amen, we couldn't keep. I ain't got nobody here today. We couldn't keep the law. Is that right? And so thank God for grace. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The law was our schoolmaster. Is that right? The law, amen, thank God, uh, 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 was there, amen, as a schoolmaster to, to show us ourselves, to show us our sin, to show us, amen, where we was at. Is that right? Amen. But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Struggling with sin. Let's go to Romans chapter 7, verse number 13. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid, but sin. Help me say, but sin. That it might appear sin. Working death in me by that which is good. That sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. 
For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal. Listen to Paul talk. Sold under sin for that which I do, I allow not. Listen to Paul. Listen to the word. Don't pass up words. I want you to make note of these scriptures. For that which I do. Stop there. Put a pen there. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. So the things I hate, I'm doing. And the things I should do, I'm not doing. Contrast and con conflict. Contrast and comparison. So I know what's right to do, but I'm doing wrong. Because sin is ever present, and it's like a tug of war within me. Uh, the flesh against the spirit. Huh? The spirit indeed is willing, but the Bible said the flesh is weak. So how do you strengthen the weak flesh? By keeping it under subjection through fasting and praying, seeking God's faith, being under the word, and getting in the word. Is that right? And then applying that word to your life. Get behind me, Satan. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Get behind me, Satan. Thou shalt not have no other God before me. I ain't got nobody here today. Huh? Because the devil, and according to John 10 and 10, come to steal, kill, and to destroy. Three component. It's threefold. Then the be called, but I am come, or I am come, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. But in the A clause, the devil comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. In the be called, I am come, that you might have life. And have it more abundantly. God wants you to have abundant life. But sin is the problem. Sin nature. Is that right? That old man. That old nature. That old behavior. That old attitude. That old uh, uh, behavior. The old thoughts. And so it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. He's a new creation. A new creature. All things, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Look at God, all things become new again. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, S-O-N, that whosoever believeth in him, believe. Whosoever believeth in him, he have no respect to a person. Shall not perish, but have an everlasting life. Why? Verse 17. God, help me say, God didn't send his son into the world to condemn it, to judge it. But that the world through him, not Buddha, not Mohammed, not Lord Krishna, not some idol. Ain't got nobody. For God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be what? Saved. But through Jesus. Proverbs 14 and 12 said that this way, there is a way, let's unwrap this. There is a way, my brothers and sisters, that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is death. Come out from among them. Be you separate, says the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. Then I'll receive you unto myself. Oh, my God. But there is steps to be taken. And so you have to take the proper steps in the process to be processed. Have you taken the proper steps? Is that right? Amen. It's a process. But the process can't be processed unless you take the proper steps. My God, my God. Let's read on. If then I do, verse 16, if then I do that which I would not, I can send unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it. Uh-oh, so who's doing it then, uh, Paul, if it's not you? But sin is controlling me. Sin is pulling me. Sin uh, is nudging me. Sin is tempting me. Huh? Sin by looking through the eye gate, listening through the ear gate. I ain't got nobody. The Bible said that this, he said three things I hate. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Lusting through the eye gate. Lusting through the flesh gate. 
and the pride get lifted up. You're not the creator. You're the creation. God created heavens and earth, the world, the sea, and they that dwell therein. God made heaven and earth. What's seen and what's not seen, visible and invisible. You didn't make yourself. Huh? Ain't got nobody here today. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Verse 18. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, talk to us, Paul, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin is the culprit that dwelleth in me. So we have to deal with that three-letter word that's powerful and has, and has control. Don't give the devil power over you by allowing those things that you succumb to or succumb into to cause you to go astray, to cause you to get off course, to cause you to be led by your flesh instead of be led by the Spirit of God. Say, Lord, where you lead, I'll follow. Speak, I'll listen. Command, I'll obey. Is that right? And so there's a constant war going on. Flesh won't what flesh won't. Is that right? Some people may not never admit it. Is that right? But there's a constant war going on. And so it's the same thing with lusting and committing adultery through the eye gate. The way you look at a woman, undressing a woman, the way you look at a man, undressing a man, you have committed adultery already, performed the act already in your heart according to the word. Same thing with murder. Some people think you need to physically shoot somebody, cut somebody, choke somebody out. Is that right? Ain't got nobody here today. But there's more than one way to kill a person. You can kill their influence. You can kill their following. You can kill their reputation by the power of this, the tongue. The Bible said the tongue is the smallest member on your body. But, but it speaks loud. It ruleth. Is that right? The tongue. It, 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 it's the smallest member on your body, but it got a whole lot to say. Am I right about it? Always got a whole lot to say. Is that right? So you have to ask God to, 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 to keep your tongue under subjection. Is that right? Say, Lord, keep my tongue under su subjection. So we have to learn how to shut our mouth. Some people just don't know how to shut their mouth. Just always got something to say. Like to keep a bunch of mess going. Because they messy. Is that right? Ain't got nobody. As long as it doesn't have anything to do with them and their family, as long as it's you and your family or you, is that right? Ain't got nobody here today. But what's right about that as a, as a believer? What's right about that as a saint? What's right about that as a son, a blood-bought son and daughter of the Most High God? The Bible said in, John, in, in James 4 and 7, this is how we draw near to God. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. How do you resist the devil? By drawing nigh to God. How do you draw nigh to God? I'm so glad you asked. Through prayer, through fasting, through Bible study, to forsaking not to sit yourself in the household affair. Huh? Through devotion with God. Is that right? Communing with God, meditating on God's word both day and night. So, Joshua 1 8 and 9 and 10, read it. The first division of Psalms, read it. Number of Psalms, read it. Huh? Psalms 1 and 1. Read. I ain't got nobody here today. So, here we go. It says, speak not evil one of another, brother. And he that speaketh evil of his brother, and judges him, speaketh evil of the law, and judges the law. But if thou judgest the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judgest another? Huh? My God, my God. So let's go back up. It says, submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. A double-minded person, the Bible says, is unstable, no stability in all his ways. 
And the Bible said in Proverbs, the third chapter, in all your ways acknowledge him. And he shall, notice the verb, direct your path. Why? I'm glad you asked. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The devil don't order your step, but if you allow your step to be governed by the devil, the devil sure enough will tempt you to be led by him. Lead him by the spirit, is that right? I ain't got nobody here that lead him by the flesh instead of by the spirit. Don't let the flesh consume you. Is that right? Amen, thank God. Huh? Let's get Matthew's, let's get how, how Jesus dealt with the tempter. Is that right? Jesus himself was tempted, but yet without sin. So we, have, we are without excuse. So don't make no excuse that even Jesus himself was tempted, right? But yet without sin. Let's go to Matthew's got the fourth chapter. Begin at reading the verse number one in the following verses. Is that right? Amen. Thank God. Uh, down, uh, amen, to verse number seven. I think that'll be sufficient. Uh, then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Now, I want you to hear me. Now, listen. Then was Jesus the master teacher, our Lord and our Savior, led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So the spirit led him up to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. So look at the story unfolded. He had fasted, what, 40 days and 40 nights. My God, my God. He was afterward, after the fast, he was afterward, he was hungry. And when the tempter came to him, when the devil came to him, in the state that he knew he was in, he had fasted for 40 days, he had fasted for 40 nights, and now he had a desire to eat. But what table, you got to watch who's feeding you. What table are you eating from? Who's doing the feeding? You got to watch out who's feeding your soul. You can't let everybody feed you. You can't eat from everybody's table. So you got to be careful who's feeding you and what they're feeding you. And make sure that you can confirm and verify what is being said is accurate. Confirmation, verification makes for good understanding. Confirmation, verification makes for good understanding. Confirm it, verify it, there's an understanding. Confirmation, verification makes for good understanding. The Bible said in all you're getting, get an understanding. Most people fall out, stop talking to one another, have an issue with their sister or their brother because of misunderstanding, a lack of understanding. And the Bible said in all you're getting, get an understanding. What his will is for your life. His will is for us not to bite and devour one another, but to pray one ye for another that we might be healed. Why you think that some people are still sick in their body, still sick in their mind, still sick, huh, in different areas of their life? Because they refuse to pray for their sister and their brother, but they rather hold a grudge. They rather harbor ill feelings in their heart. They rather have malice in their heart against their sister and their brother. Rather than forgive them. Rather than pray for them. Rather than amen, two or three come together. Amos three and three. As touching and agreeing on the same God said I'll be in. How can two uh, walk together lest there be an agreement? Amos three and three. How can two walk together lest they be agreed? Hey, huh? But when two or three come together as touching and agreeing on the same thing, God said, then, brothers and sisters, I'll be in the midst of that. So you got prayer warriors. No, you got prayer leaders, prayer intercessor, and prayer warriors. So be a prayer, be a, be a prayer a leader. Be a prayer intercessor. Intercede for your brother. Intercede for your sister. Be a prayer warrior. We're in spiritual warfare. Is that right? And so we need somebody to know how to get a, a prayer through to God. I, I need a breakthrough. So you don't need nobody talking about it, but be about it. I got a prayer life. Do you? Do you have a prayer life? Do you spend time communing with God? Do you ever fast? Do you ever stay in your word? But you spend most of your time on the hell, I mean the telephone. Spend most of your time, is that right, texting. 
huh? whispering. Throwing shade on your brother, throwing shade on the church, throwing shade on your neighbors, throwing shade on that family, throwing shade on that sister that messed up, that brother that failed, that sinned, instead of taking time out of your schedule and say, Lord, have mercy on my sister, have mercy on me, have mercy on my brother. So we have to make sure that we work on ourselves more so than want to work on somebody else, make sure they're right. And you have a lot of times where people, man, they're they going to make sure that you're doing dotting all your I's, crossing all your T's. And they're the biggest hell raisers in the church. So we have to stop. Stop it. Stop it. And work on yourself. Work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. The Bible said in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, to study. To be quiet. Work with your own hands. Take care of your own business. Uh-oh. It says to study to be quiet. Work with your own hands. Take care of your own business. People want to be all up in your business, but don't get in my business. Don't get in my family business, but I'm all up in yours. Oh, Now, what's the takeaway from that? Do unto others as you have them do unto you. So what you don't like, why you do. What I don't like, why do I do? So we have to make sure that as it is with others, so it should be with us. Don't tell your family, don't tell your children, uh, 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 do as I say, not as I do. What is that? No. Is that right? So people want to use that as an excuse or a reason why they don't want to come to church, why they stop coming to church, why they don't want to do what's right. Is that right? But you can't use, the, 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 you can't use amen, a sister or a brother in the church that hurt you, that harm you. You can't even use your pastor. Oh, man. Oh, man, my pastor, you know what I mean? You know, he really hurt me. He, he, he really disappointed me. And, he, and I thought he was this. And I found that he's, he's totally different than what it was. Holding on to what God has already released that individual from. But you yet there when that person, uh, you're yet here when that person is there now. Used to be here, but now he's there. Now, she used to be here, now she's there. But you're still here. Huh? So we have to make sure that we work on ourselves. God is a progressive God. God don't want us to wallow in our sin. Is that right? Amen. And so there are sins of omission without knowledge and sins of commission with knowledge. But they both are sin. One without and one with. And so once you come into the knowledge of the truth, to them that knoweth to do good and doeth is not, is sin to you. <clears throat> so once you come into the knowledge of the truth, think about it. What are you saying? Come here, Paul. When Paul was Saul, he was doing things out of ignorance. Huh? Those on the way. Is that right? Was it called Christians yet? Is that right? Those along the way. The way people. Is that right? So Paul got a letter with the king's signet, which when you get the king's signet on, amen, thank God, a document, it seals it. And so it's irreversible. You can't reverse it because the king's signet has sealed it. And so he had that letter taking it. I ain't got nobody here. I ain't got nobody. With authority to attack. To tear down, to bring down, to destroy, to bring harm, those along the way. Is that right? The way people want to wipe them out, want to annihilate them. But God met Paul and Saul, was Saul then on the road of Damascus. Is that right? On Damas where, where, where's your road of Damascus? When you had sin in your heart, thinking that God was in it. Until he blinded your eyes and you had to go down to a street called straight to get wrong, right, and crooked straight. <laughs> That's the God we serve. My God, my God. Woo! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to have to wrap it up. Amen. Thank God. We started late, but I don't want to end late. Is that right? I don't want y'all talking about the pastor today. So the pastor started late and he's going over time. I ain't got nobody here today. But we need this. I need it. You need it. We need it. I'm not throwing up on nobody. 
I'm not casting stones at nobody. I'm not doing things to bring attention to nobody. But I want to make, let God know, work on me. Start with me. I, I, I need to see me. Where, where am I at? Where do I need to be at? And what is going to take to get there? Where are you? Where should you be? And the last thing, what is it going to take? to get you in that right place with God. Brothers and sisters, as I close, Jesus is soon to come. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. My question that I want to leave on the floor is will you be ready when he comes? He's coming back. Brothers and sisters, be encouraged. Keep the faith. I want you to sow into this ministry. This is good ground. I thank God for each and every one of you viewing, tuning in. Thank God for my Open Door family and my Facebook friend. I love each and every one of you. And I'm praying that God continue to give you strength, comfort, and give you peace of mind. Continue to keep us lifted up in prayer. Continue, amen, to add, amen. Ask God to add on to the church such as should be saved. Is that right? Amen. We want you to be a blessing to this ministry, whatever God put on your heart to do. Amen. I thank God for you. God bless you. Good night.